Welcome back. It's the Sunday edition of Hockey Unfiltered with Todd Lewis here every Saturday and Sunday, 11 Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific at HockeyUnfiltered.com, streaming live on the Hockey Unfiltered app. Before the top of the hour, Steve Laidlaw with this week's Fantasy Five, hashtag Fantasy Five, helping the fantasy hockey pool. Always happy to welcome our next guest back to the program. It's pretty much an annual visit during All-Star Weekend. He is the keeper of the Stanley Cup, the guy with the white gloves who gets it from place to place safely, hashtag... <laughs> Hashtag stories with Stanley, and you can follow him on Twitter at Keeper of the Cup. Phil Pritchard joins us on the line. Phil, I saw the great photo from yesterday with the cup, with the life jacket around. And is is this a first, as far as you know, that the Stanley Cup has worn a life jacket for the first time as it did yesterday? Oh, you know what, Todd? I mean, uh, always great to chat with you. It's it's a great weekend here, Gasparilla weekend. It's a huge weekend here in Tampa for those that know about it. The pirate invasion. And it, it was pretty special. We actually, funny enough, and this is a big coincidence, the first time I recall having a, a life jacket on was at Steve Eiserman's Stanley Cup party with the Wings 20 years ago. His, uh, he wanted to go on a sea do, and his oldest daughter said, Dad, we got to have water safety. You got to put a life jacket on it. So we did it then, and we did it yesterday as well on the pirate ship as it invaded Tampa. It was so special to tie in the whole Gasparilla festivities with the NHL All-Star festivities, and it's a hop in town in Tampa today. Oh, it, it's it's a wonderful experience for those that that haven't seen it firsthand and up close. The the tour that you and the Stanley Cup make every year is remarkable. But at events like All Star Weekend or the Draft or any or any of the other events that you make appearances at, just the the sight of the Stanley Cup as it arrives and people are waiting for it and looking at it, you can you can see their eyes open a little wider, the the mouths open a little bit with excitement, and then when when they find out they can have their picture taken with it, it's just it's it's, it, it's got to be so rewarding for you personally to see that constantly. Yeah. And you know what is all special Todd and, and you know, as well as anybody to, to hear their stories and to share stories with them that hockey fans are so dedicated and so uh, traditional and so respectful of everything about the sport. It's great. Uh, the lineups have been great here the past three days and uh, the people of Tampa have been wonderful, but to hear their stories and to, to hear about all their moments in the hockey and lightning and everything on that. It's, it's so special, but you're right. They are, their eyes are wide open. They're always thrilled to see it. And it's always special time to, to share moments with them. Now. So what's on the agenda today? Will you be bringing the, the Stanley cup along the red carpet to, to enter Emily arena later on today for the building or what's the schedule of events? Well, where, where I'm at right now, they're just finishing setting up the red carpet as the players are going to start walking through and they kind of go right between the pregame because this year the the celebration and all the activities are on either side of of the uh, the road, and the red carpet is going right down the road. So we'll be able to see them from our where we are. And at our display, we have all the NHL trophies on display. Uh, but no, we're remaining in one spot. We're going to watch all the players go by on the red carpet, and they're being dropped off, and then walking into the arena. And the weather right now looks great, and Hopefully by 3.30 the game time, it, it should be spectacular in there. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that too, is that the the traveling display of all the other trophies that come along with the Stanley Cup. I mean, having their, your picture photo and photos taken with the cup is one thing, but but to see the history of the league in that traveling display is also something that's so special. It is, and, and I don't think there's a, and I'm kind of biased a bit, Todd, but I don't think there's any other out there that has the tradition of trophies like the National Hockey League does. There's 20 of them in total in the Vesna for the best goalie and the Calder for the Rookie of the Year or the GM of the Year, What might, whatever you might have. They're, they're all beautiful. They're all silver. And when they're in a group together like we are here at uh, NHL pregame, it's, it's spectacular. And for the fans, that opportunity is a priceless one. Phil Pritchard is our guest, the keeper of the Stanley Cup, at Keeper of the Cup is how you follow him on Twitter. Okay, Phil, I get asked this all the time, so I have to ask you to relay a couple of stories of your most recent travels with the Stanley Cup, because after the Stanley Cup is awarded for the second time in, in as many years, the Pittsburgh Penguins had their, their go with it over the summer. You hit the road and you accompanied the Cup on a whole bunch of the tours. Is there one or two places in particular that got your attention from this summer's past tour? Uh, 
by all means, Todd. I mean, it, it is the second time in as many years the Penguins won the Cup, so you get to see how creative they are in that. And, and this summer, we actually were in seven countries with the Penguins, so that shows you how diversified the team and the league is. We hit uh, Canada, U.S., Germany, Russia, Sweden, Finland, and Switzerland. So it was a, a good good thing for Stanley's passport this summer. But <laughs> two that stick up my, out in my mind, Chris Kunitz, who is now actually a member of the Tampa Bay Lightning, he's won the Stanley Cup four times now. And you'd think he'd run out of ideas, but this year he let his kids pick. And nice. so they had a pool party in in uh, just outside of downtown Pittsburgh where he's got his house. And they had a pool party. All their friends came and their families and their moms and dads came. And, that, and it was just pretty special to see. We've kind of seen Chris grow up through the NHL and when he first won with Anaheim and he's won a three with Pittsburgh. But to see that party unfold, it, it was pretty special. And that's shows what a lot of the guys are. They're family guys. They care about the team and they care about everyone around them. And I, I think another one which was pretty neat, I thought, was uh, Sidney Crosby, who always brings it back home. But this year, he went back to Ramouski in Quebec, where he played junior. And he wanted to thank those people because that's, for him, that's where his start was in junior hockey in Ramouski, Quebec. And they had a big parade for him and everything. And it's, I think the common bond is they always think of other people. And and that's what's special. And sure, they have the parties and they go to the, the bars at night, but it's the things they do that really mean a lot to them that the public doesn't always see that, to me, is pretty special. Yeah, those are the wonderful stories that they go back and visit, whether it's their hometown, their junior town, or in, in this case, Sidney Crosby's done it a few times. And there and there's often a, a, a charitable part of it, too, is that they want to raise funds for for an arena that needs a little bit of refurbishing or something like that. And and the players always focus on that as 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 part of their day with the Stanley Cup. And that's part of what makes the game, game so great. For sure. And and you know, you hit it right on the, the fundraising part for their hometown. And it's not necessarily hockey. The, the town might need a new baseball field, a new football field. And they remember that because when they were in their town, they used to go to that baseball field or play pickup ball or whatever they did there. So they will reach out as well. And it, every little bit helps in all these towns. But the guys don't forget it. And uh, you know what? As, as Wherever they move in this world, home is always home. And they, they don't forget that. And I, that's what makes it special. And I think tying back to the all-star here with all these players that are here, everyone's thrilled to be an all-star, but they're always, they always remember their home. Phil Pritchard with us, the keeper of the Stanley Cup, touring around Tampa Bay and on location outside of Amelie Arena. At Keeper of the Cup is how you follow him on Twitter. On the pirate ship yesterday, wearing the life vest. Um, the other question I get is, what's the most unusual liquid or substance that was eaten or consumed out of the cup over the past year? Wow. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I know we talked a bit earlier about the seven countries we're in and they're all different cultures in that. So when you're in Russia, you're having pierogies or, or borscht soup or something like that. When you're in Finland, it's more of a, you're close to the Baltic sea. So it's seafood or, or something like that. So it always depends what uh, what country you're at? We we started talking today about the pirate ship. I mean, they had all the pirates yesterday, and they were uh, firing off their cannons. And when we uh, got off the ship, there was gunpowder and that in the top of the cup from the <laughs> exterior uh, smoke from all the from all the cannons that were going off on the ship. So never know where we're going to end up and what's going to be in it. But we cleaned it up good and it looks as good as ever today for everyone coming to pregame before the All Star game. That's a, that's the amazing part is that you guys are so meticulous and always making it look good and, and taking care of it. You told me this story a couple of years ago too. And I, I find it's amazing that you keep all the white gloves. How many, how many pairs of gloves have you gone through over the last year? <laughs> I, I wish we had my wife, my wife on the phone now, Todd, cause she'd be able to tell you exactly <laughs> I'm running out of drawer space in my house. <laughs> uh, you know, I thought you're right about, well, once a week I keep my white gloves and I put them in a little bag and mark on them. And I guess that's the curatorial side of me working at the Hockey Hall of Fame, just to hang on to them. Uh, I do send my wife a postcard from every place I've been, and she told me last year that we just hit the 3,200 mark in postcards. So it's, it's getting up there. It's a lot, and it's, it's all because of this great game of hockey that we all love and enjoy. 
Oh, that's 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 a great story too, and um, thank you for sharing it with us. Do you, in your other capacity, when you have the chance, do you ever just kind of wander around the Hall of Fame? Because that's that's where you are when you're not on the road with the cup. Do you ever just kind of wander around and explore a little bit too? Well, it is. I mean, as as much as we work in the business, we're all hockey fans as well. But to to walk through the Hockey Hall of Fame, it's it's an it's an education through through photos or through video or through artifacts, and to look at some of the the great artifacts and just imagine what it was like playing hockey in the '30s when Eddie Shore or Howie Morenz was playing to see their equipment and that it it is spectacular. But I think it's always an education process for not not just me or any of the people at the hall, but for anyone that visits the hall to see how the game has changed and evolved. And today it's played in 75 countries around the world, I think. And to me, once you've seen a game live, once you're a fan forever. And I think that's what makes it so special. Phil Pritchard looking after the Stanley Cup at Keeper of the Cup is how you should be following him on Twitter. I always appreciate the time, Phil. It's great to catch up and hopefully we'll do it again soon. Thanks for this as always. I appreciate it, pal. All right, Todd. Hey, as always, great talking to you. Have a good one. Cheers. Phil Pritchard looking after the Stanley Cup just outside Amelie Arena. If you are in the vicinity to head down for the game or even if you're not going for the game and you want to battle through the crowds, all of the NHL trophies are there on display with the history. And yes, have your picture taken with the Stanley Cup. It's it's something special. In fact, I changed back the avatar on my Twitter handle this the last few days just to have one of the more recent pictures of me taken with the Stanley Cup. Anytime I have the opportunity, I do, and it's been three or four different times now that I've been able to do it. They'll let you put your hand on it. They'll let you touch it, but but Phil will not let you pick it up and hoist it over your head, and that's reserved for the players. At Hockey Unfiltered, at Todd Lewis Sports, Twitter and Instagram handles to follow us. One more segment up to the top of the hour. It'll be Steve Laidlaw with this week's Fantasy Five. Hashtag Fantasy Five, help for you in your fantasy hockey pool. That and much more all straight ahead.